life. I've been reading Kerrang all my life. Like, <laughs> Hello, this is Joe at Kerrang. Um, currently out of the office all day on what? Friday, back in again on Monday. So leave your message now. I'm going to call you on Monday. Thank you. Excuse Please me? Please speak after the tone. This isn't good. Oh, I'm phoning from a band called Paola uh, over in Belfast here. Monday night we are playing Sound Republic in... Leicester Square, London, I think you need to get the entire office along because it's going to be worth your while. Take a risk. Fabulously famous rock bands in the world. I think, I think it would be excellent fun. I've had enough of the hungry, struggling artist crap. I would love it, man. A bit of the luxury now. <laughs> Should eat some more, Nico? Huh? <laughs> Should eat some more? <laughs> nah. Struggling artists. No longer. Be him high. Paola have a strong following in their home city of Belfast, and after two years together, are about to release their first single on a local label. Had, right? There was just the, uh... Yeah, remember? That's on the second. That verse will come in there. You know what I mean? This, I mean, this is definitely not a hobby to us. You know, we take it very seriously. I mean, we have fun doing it, but we take it very seriously. We do have a goal at the end of it, like, we want to get somewhere, but, you know, you just keep going and think we'll do it, you know? <laughs> The members of the band have ordinary day jobs in engineering, PR and computer programming, but their aim is to turn their music into a full-time profession. <laughs> Next week, Paola will be playing their first gig in London. They'll be one of five bands hoping to grab the interest of record companies and the national music yeah. press. Those are really well, huh? You know, those, those do look... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Those, I mean, they, they came out better than I thought they would. I mean, I've got some like, contagious skin disease in them, like, but I mean, apart from that, they're great. Yeah. I think we all do, actually. Yeah, <laughs> sort of blotchy boys. Yeah, they're a hundred quids going on bits of paper, <laughs> coloured ink on them. No, but they, I mean, they're fine. They'll do the job. All we need for <laughs> London is... Uh, about Six, seven, ten packages. Yeah. The bottom line is the main thing is that we get a review in Kerrang magazine. The guy from EMI comes, the girl Deb Wild, she hopefully will come along, but we can phone her on her mobile when we're in London. Um, who else is there? There's a few other people. How about Doogie? Is anything spoken to him? I spoke to Doogie. Gone. I spoke to Doogie on uh, Wednesday night, but he was just, you know, humming and hawing what's happening on Sunday. He, he says he's got gigs to do. He can't probably for usual. I mean, but he's, 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 late late he's late for every gig we do, which is fair enough. Like, well, but he can't be late for a boat. Yeah. He can't it's, stall it. Yeah, well, it doesn't make sense. It's no way will he be leaving Belfast at 11 o'clock. Not a chance. Something's going to go wrong. The boat will sink or something. Yeah. Bound to. But I think Dougie, it all lies with Dougie. If he can get his backside together and get us down there, you know, we're, we're going to be going to be fine. Really Really, we're just going over to try and firstly raise our profile in the mainland. It's the first time Paolo have been over to do a gig in England. Uh, hopefully try to get some more record company interests. It's a lot more structured there. That's where it's based, so it's easier to get the industry types along. Basically, you're doing it on their doorstep. I mean, there's a lot of great bands that have come out of here. I mean, recently, like, Code.UK, you know, they're doing well for themselves, you know, and we sort of think, like, there's no reason if they can do it, there's no reason why we can't do it, you know? We need a good manager, let's just say this now, because there's only so much we can do. We need somebody who really knows the business. You got, it's, it's frustrating when you know other bands have got entire offices full of PR people and uh, management and uh, pluggers all working on behalf money, of them. Money, 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 money. And we're all doing it. We're, you know, we're doing it from my flat and his house and, you know, we're his just bank account, my bank account. Yeah, we're <laughs> Oh, 
answer machine. Well, we can't take a call at the moment, so just leave them there. I'm sick of talking answer control. machines. That is about half this job. I mean, like you sitting in your flat with the telephone uh, going, it's not what it's about. You want to be on stage most of the time and yeah, you know, doing, doing the rock this thing. This is the totally on rock yeah. and roll side of this. 50% of me just hates this crap. I got in last night. I, was, I sort of got in. I didn't get listening to my message until late on at night. But there was a message from about, left about 7 o'clock. Uh, you know, it was a guy, Anthony Cavan, I think his name is, from EMI in London. So uh, the message just said, we believe you're playing in London. We want to know where, when the gig is because we want to come along. I'll give him a quick call and see if I can get in contact with him here. Hello, is that Anthony Kavanagh? Yes, speaking. Anthony, my name is uh, Philip from a, a rock band called uh, Paolo over in Belfast here. Hi, uh, how you doing? You all right? I'm not too bad, mate. I believe you were calling last night. I, d I tried to get in contact with you again earlier. Yeah, so the gig is next week, isn't it? It's it's Monday night, Sound Republic. That's right, I've I got think... it in the diary. Um, and, uh, sorry, jog my memory, I've had a hell of a day. Did, did you say you'd sent some stuff over? Or yeah, we or... had done. Um, do you reckon there's a good chance of getting along to the gig? Yep, there certainly is. Now, what time are you on again? Uh, I think, well, 10 o'clock is safe enough. All right. Shortly sure. after 10. All right. Well. Uh, so just make yourself known to us and we'll have a drink and a chat anyway. Sure thing. Okay, lad. All right, mate. I will see you then. Okay, thanks a lot, Anthony. Cheers. See you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, well they... pleasant enough, but I mean, jog my memory, have you, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, he got the number from somewhere, phoned me up, blah, blah, blah. Um, but is he, uh, he going to come to the gig? Yeah, he says he's coming. Right I've got to be happy enough for that, because there's not too many people. First trip to London, get somewhere like that coming along. I think he's pretty high up there in the organisation. The band are playing a warm-up gig in preparation for their trip to London. Watching will be Belfast punk impresario Terry Hooley, the man who first recorded The Undertones. Terry is releasing Paola's debut single on his Good Vibrations label. Is. Bringing me to a pub where Jerry Adams used to be the barman. And we recorded Teenage Kicks in a clothing warehouse just out there. John Peel's all type David record. We first met Terry Bully back in 97. And he was ranting, ranting and raving about, I'm going to make you famous, you are brilliant, you are brilliant. Everyone going, Terry, your drug, shut up. And ever since then, it's sort of happened. Five this morning, running them off. So if I get a chance tomorrow, I might drop some down your door. What time are you leaving it? Uh, about 11 in the morning. Right, Have you anything that's really distorted? Have you any real distortion signs or do you keep just dirty, dirty sound? Okay, cool. You ready? Hello, one, two. Hello, one, two. We were booked at a gig by a friend of mine. And I said, what the hell are you booking that band for? And they went, they blew me away. And I went up to them afterwards and I said, you know, I didn't want just to play this gig and I thought it was a mistake. And I said, I apologize. And I said, you were, I thought you were brilliant. And I was absolutely wrong. And if there's anything I can never do for you, let me know. It's all I have to do. You know, I think music's like a, a sort of magical thing. Everybody in the world's got different musical tastes and nobody can explain why. How can you explain that you're born with a, a certain taste of music? For some reason, rock and roll just hooked me in immediately. Whenever you saw a band on TV, it just seemed larger than life. And it just seemed so exciting, you know? Just ever since I was young, I've always wanted to do it. I don't know why, I just, just do it. It just seems to excite me, you know? Sounds terrible, but Iron Maiden were my heroes. The first time I saw Iron Maiden was in the King's Hall, and uh, they come on stage, and I was so excited, and I fainted. I actually fainted, and I missed about the first six songs of, of their set. What do you Maybe a bit of money there. Open it up. Open it up. Maybe a bit of fine coins. You got it? Breaking it. 
I hate mornings. Especially Sunday mornings. Peggy here. Can I go on those That's what he's saying. I don't know. I just used to watch film as usual. How many people can eat a car once over? I think I called out. See if there's any presents underneath the sofa. There's a Christmas card from last year. There could be cash prize in this good goodie bag. They might have to be. I'm bringing over 30 quid to London woman. <laughs> I don't think so. Don't want to be disappointed. Goodbye, shithole. <laughs> that's it, that's it. Oh. Oh my god, oh, I feel absolutely fantastic man. It's been as well as I've ever felt on a Sunday morning in my entire life. There's got a little adventure to go on now. Normally I'm just snoozing off a hangover, but good things are about to happen, and I've got my sofa with me. <laughs> off we go, rock and roll. Bye bye. Bad news on the road. Paola are on their way to Dublin for the afternoon ferry crossing that will take them across to Liverpool. It's the start of a journey that could decide their future. I would love to get a record date, which would mean I could do this here all the time and get paid for it. And I mean, I don't want to be like a billionaire or a millionaire. I just, I just it would be really good if I could do this properly without being skinned. <laughs> I just want the red mess to send it upstairs. <laughs> do you get freezing here? Do you have some heat, please? Do you, why do you keep on turning it off? Do you feel falling asleep as usual? Everybody in the band has got different ideas of how far they would like to take it, but basically, well, we'd love to just take it as far as it goes. I think we'd all still like to be doing this, you know, 10, 20 years from now. Though. It's like a fucking fridge in here. It's <laughs> <laughs> like a front spring. I'm actually dead to see you. Doogie! Doogie, give us some heat. Grand oh, what? In and out. Angry arse flying on the air. It's on that. It's a beautiful sight. <laughs> you see? You see? It's like a big bump. You could have cleaned it by the way, Dougie, it looks stinking. It's not prestigious, we could have been able to roll into London, making a fine-out brush and looking like the coolest man in town. Stink, it on it. Stinking old dirty transit van. It's quite clean the van, your fucking tea's in it. Alright, I'm going to get sweaty up there. Are you going for a swim? I think the band is totally ready for it now. I think maybe you know a couple of months ago we might have been ready for it, but we've got to the stage now. We're totally rehearsed. We're totally ready. We've totally got the songs, and we're totally eager to do it. All we need is some that extra bit of interest, just to take us a step further. And we've nearly done as much as we can do. Yeah, no, 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 no. I think all I have to do is swivel out here a bit. <laughs> Get in the middle. Well, cool. it's, it's like in reverse, we're going reverse the way. No, it's going to go plumping up there. Oh, see, are you trying to tell us this is the It's not the, the back of the boat, it's the front of the it's boat. It's the back of the boat? Or is... The bottom line is, you want to have a... I want to make a living out of music. I want to be able to, to live off this and what I do. But how can you explain it? I want to wake up in the morning and actually look forward to what I'm going to do that day. It all boils down to what makes you feel good, what gives you that little adrenaline rush, what gives you the, you know, hers in the back of your neck standing up. There isn't a nine to five job in the world that's ever been invented that's gonna do that for me. <laughs> and I am high. And I've got all the time in the world. I was gonna tear in my eye, I'm almost like this, like. The wind fell, the wind. But the bollock freezing cold. <laughs> it's funny, I know we're on our way. I'm all excited now. Oh. <laughs>
I tell you what, you get a guitar and you get playing, and sooner or later you'll be on the big stage, man. You'll be hitting the big time. I can watch you on Tuesday. Are you coming down? Yeah. Good lad. Brilliant. Did a T-shirt printed up for him or something? What's your name, man? Kyle. Kyle. Graham. Graham. My name's Philip. I'll see you Tuesday night. Good lad. That's what I like to see. Young fans. Ooh. Young boy walking around the making things. That's absolutely right. Most of our fans are over 50. Hey, I, I think, is that the Liver building we're looking at? Glory. If I was sad enough to watch Brooks, I'd know what that building was. <laughs> and the evening is it, boys? Oh, yeah. Rock o'clock. It's the time of day it always is. <laughs> Rock o'clock of the, the month of October. <laughs> we got we got we got pulled in. Uh, they, 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 they took Dougie out of the van, asked him what the heck was going on, like, you know, and, uh, and had a little bit of a search around. Basically, they asked him a classic question, they said, where are you travelling to? Dougie's sitting in front of a sign in front of the van saying, welcome to Liverpool, goes, Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> but they weren't one bit impressed, strange enough, we were sitting laughing our nads off, and they were just standing there, like, very po-faced and uh, unimpressed by our behaviour. But we got away with it without, without any penetration, thank goodness. <laughs> The bottom line is, they didn't find the drugs, we're all right. So, uh, we're on the road again. The band will stay the night in Liverpool before continuing their journey in the morning. Hi. Five people on the shower, Phil gets in, freezing cold, freezing cold, freeze oh my balls off, man. And uh, so I'm, I'm standing there trying to, I'm having to wash it in jet, I get wash my hair, then take it off, then, then spritz it out, man. Yeah, I see you've got the horn there, anyway. I'll tell you what's woken me up for. I had a hangover about 15 minutes ago, all I've got in the house is done. Clear my head, all right. Handy enough. Take it easy, lad. Oh my god. What time you come down? In true rock and roll style, Paola are late setting off, but they're finally on the road to their first London gig. Phil, we should be doing all the fucking hard songs tonight. Why not do some of the poppy ones? Like at least one, probably one. Here's this other cheeseburger. <laughs> the lads are cutting it fine. There may not be time to check their sound equipment when they get to London. We're gonna have to fly down the highway now. Yeah. What are you talking about? not at 6 o'clock. Exactly. We've four and a quarter hours to get there for the check. Quarter to two. Quarter to Quarter to Quarter So what's for the after gig entertainment tonight then? So, laptop dancing. Laptop dancing. What's that? An internet cafe? They're already late, and they're still not sure where the club is. Nice and sex shop, oh my, Raymond. Is this Soho? There's Raymond's Review Bar. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
bunch of country yokels getting yeah. all excited about this. A couple of taggy sex shops and a peep show. Yeah. We're lost. I don't believe it. We're lost. going around in circles. Hello, Cleveland. By the time they arrive, all they can do is bring in their gear. It's too late for a sound check. Tell us, Phil, to get out of bed this morning early enough. Right, we're going to get Mr. Soundcheck. It's going to be an hour and a half session here. Out of my bed early enough. Uh, the play basically is that we're, we're not getting up. a sound check. Yeah, we left Liverpool up. too late through them all wanting to eat, but it was quite unnecessary. <laughs> For whatever reason, we're here late. And we're not getting a sound check, but we've many a time survived without a sound check before. If it sounds like shit, so what? We're professional. We, we rise above it. What? Where was all those other rock and rollers? Now that they're here, all they want to do is drum up an audience big enough to impress the man from EMI. <laughs> Cold, cold, this fact of part of like it's freezing, that there's a, it's cold in a couple of ways, like, you know, the people seem to be, don't look at anyone, like, you know, maybe they think we're about to attack them or something, like, you know, there's these mad Irish bastards walking down the street, or, hey, maybe, but, uh, I'm getting a few away, you never know, I tell you, if, if, if two people come because of us coming out here and doing this, then it's really not worth it. <laughs> I really desperately, desperately want to play a good, good gig tonight and go down really well, and be chuffed with myself, you know, but we all do. You want to go down, huh? Are my nipples a wreck? They are. They are. I don't really think about the whole, the whole thing. I mean, I, I don't get nervous before it. I don't really feel excited. I just, I just feel comfortable in the situation, you know? It's the best feeling in the world. When you're standing in front of an audience, you're going, fuck mad to your songs, getting really in there. There's no other feeling like it. I've had to get up on stage and read out lottery numbers and shit myself, but for some reason, you strap on a guitar, you get up, and you know you're playing your own songs. It, it's, just, it's an exciting feeling. It's, I think that is why there's so many idiots like me that just get hooked on this nonsense, because what would you replace it with? You are. Ladies and gentlemen, we are called Paola. We have swam, walked, and crawled on our hands and knees to get here to London to play a gig for you. I think there's a rice cubes. Perhaps that's just nerves. Let's do a better rock and roll. This song is called Keep Your Head Up. with some flaming record day signed in blood, you know, and the best we can do is get our foot in the door here, and we'll be back as soon as possible. And next time we'll know a few more people, and it just snowballs like that, that's the way. And it ain't just England either, you know, there's other markets out there, if we don't get, if, the UK market doesn't want us. I'm sure the Americans and the Germans and the Japanese will be interested. You'll be big in Japan, you know. <laughs> the old cliche. This song's for any wanger. It's called Stick Two Fingers Up. This is our single. Take yourself a sob, stick your fingers up, lock your 
lack of quality and individuality. Peace, my maternity. It really went as well as we probably could have expected it to. Better than we expected it to do a couple of hours ago. And that's a bonus. Mr. EMI. He may have been there, he may not have been. He might be one of these secretive type characters hiding in the corner. A lot of A&R people tend to do that. It, to be honest, if he was there, fair play to him. If he wasn't, I really ain't gonna lose any sleep over it. Mr. EMI wasn't there, but sure. But it's, it's like we knew he wouldn't be there. You knew he wouldn't be there. I knew he wouldn't be there. So. What do you mean he was? I saw him there. Oh, did you? Yes. Oh, I think <laughs> I'm the back. I think I'm the back. Well, what the hell? We'll come over. We'll do it again. We'll get the van over. Doogie's had a ball. We've had a ball. As AC DC said, it is a long way to the top where you want to rock and roll. Bon Scott never never said a true word, but what he failed to say okay, was it's a fun way to the top of you want to rock and roll, and if you don't enjoy it, get back to your desk, because it's the best game in the world. <laughs> what a little shit I thought. Stick to fingers. Mr. EMI had seen Paola's performance, but felt that they weren't the band for him. The boys are continuing to search for their big break. They haven't as yet given up their day jobs. Stay with us here on BBC One, a double bill of medical drama at Chicago Hope in five minutes after the weather.